there's this really great feeling when you know about something that maybe nobody else in the world knows about. And it just feels good. But you have to share it eventually. <laughs> so I let's get this out here. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to do very easy, pretty high quality relighting of AI art. Okay, so the overarching workflow. So you start with some sort of AI generated image. You can create a new one, just kind of go through a bunch and see something that looks good. Once you have a good looking AI image, then you can send it in to get a normal map. So you send it through that extension. Once you have the normal map, you can attach both in Blender on a plane, and then you can do some relighting. So uh, I find just putting a light on an empty and then spinning the empty around will spin the light around, and that gives you some kind of good contrast. Once you have the image, so when you're doing the rendering for this, you render to PNG, so you create a bunch of PNG files. Uh, those files, so here's the secret sauce, here's the secret sauce. You can put those PNGs back into stable diffusion, and if you have the denoising very low on the image to image algorithm, it'll actually bake out most of the issues with the normal maps. So most of those kind of like fringes that are weird, and most of the kind of weird coloration, it'll just clean that up, and it tends to make it look like the light's actually coming from the direction. And and it seems very consistent like it seems like you can go around and it, there's really large um shifts that you can make with the lighting where it doesn't actually change the subject at all which is like a big surprise um but yeah so then once you have those images back out then you can kind of turn that into you can go into some sort of program uh there's a bunch of different ones i use fmpeg but there's like more gooey like formats where you can kind of just combine a bunch of images into a video and it works and you can also just do this with like a single frame you don't have to do this with a full video so you can just take a singular frame and relight it that way. So I wanted to go over some of the problems that I've had with this workflow. So in particular, if you have like true blacks, like uh, zero, zero, zero black, like um, no RGB value at all, uh, then it tends to not fix those colorations. So it, making sure that you don't have those really sharp um, colors, unless it's in an area that you don't like, you don't mind it just being staying that color, but uh, you don't want those, uh, the really dark colors in the middle of your image that generally, it, just, it generally just doesn't fix that. Um, another important tool is being using the uh, text painting aspect of blender so if you have any sort of normal map that has just like one or two really small minor details that don't seem right uh, you can either use the smudging or the softening tool so the softening tool if you crank up the uh, kernel for the the kernel then it, it smooths a larger surface area and that can be really nice for kind of just if you have like like especially with things like tattoos and things um, a lot of times those will come up with edges in the actual algorithm but you don't really like with normal maps but you don't really want them to have edges so you can kind of smooth those out and then the smudging is really good for kind of pushing around around normal so if there's like a normal that is just like a little bit out of position like a, an edge on the face that's a little bit out of position you can kind of use the smudge tool to kind of push it more in that direction and it works pretty well if you have like the zero zero blacks uh, you can also move the lighting further away from the image and that will kind of alleviate that as well uh, you do want there to be coloration differences so you like do want the shadows to actually appear so making sure that the light is at least a little bit close to the image is helpful like um yeah Another surprise that I got was that it seems like it remembers the like materials of things like it, it as you move the light around the lighting kind of looks like like eyes seem to be more glossy and things like sometimes the paint is very matte and uh, skin looks like skin sometimes the metals look like metals like it's it seems like the stable diffusion like when it's doing the rebaking it seems to be rebaking on like materials and that's something that is really odd as well I don't know there's a lot of this project has kind of given me a lot of question marks in terms of how much like knowledge of the real world stable diffusion like and its kind of component algorithms seem to know because I didn't expect it to have any sense of material like when you're changing the lighting that the material aspects would change because I didn't put that in in blender I just used a rough material in blender ah uh, the lighting this is throwing me off a lot <laughs> So this particular project, especially the first step, was very cherry picked. So I, I did generate a lot of initial images before I took the normal map. So uh, it was about 500 images. I narrowed that down to 50 or so good images. And then I took the normals of those. And then I narrowed it down to about 15 to 20 more images. And then that's what I've been using to do the relighting with. For the most part, it's like you just need a really high quality image to start with. And once you have that, most of the other stuff seems to work pretty well. There's so much experimentation that I haven't done with this workflow that 
I really should do, but I don't think I'm going to actually have time for. So in particular, I don't know what happens with transparency or like mirrors and reflective surfaces. Uh, I don't know what happens with uh, if there's multiple light sources. I haven't tried that out. Colored lights, I haven't tried. So that's something that could break this. I, I Yeah, I'm not sure if color, like you can recolor while you're doing this. I was just trying this with faces. So um, things like all the other things that exist in the world, I have not tried that, that this with. So um, yeah, there's a lot of, I, I don't know if it works in every single case. It's worked like a lot higher rate than I was expecting it to work. I've pretty much shown all of the attempts that I've made and they all have given fairly reasonable results. If it works in the normal map step, that usually means it'll work out, but it works really well. And the, the normal maps are also like surprisingly effective too. Like they, they do a really good job of like, if someone has like a rainbow face, they still pick out the fact that it's a face, which is like something that older algorithms would not do at all. So it's it's a pretty impressive, like Midas is pretty impressive. Uh, Staple Diffusion is pretty impressive. Both of these algorithms that we're kind of combining together are very impressive. Ah, uh, the theory behind why this works and the whole ideas around latent space, it's really interesting, <laughs> but I don't have time to get into that here.